I'm Dale Dupoy. I'm a resident field technician for the Peoria area, working on the Klaus Combine. I'm Nathan Johnson. I live in uh, Hanna City, which is east or west of Peoria. Been here six years, uh, resident field tech. Today we're going to go through a maintenance walk around on the Lexion 700 series combine. There's some more bushings up inside. There's a couple on your main prep pan or your main uh, your main floor that's underneath your rotors, and there's a couple up at the front of it. A bushing a pair on each one. It's a hard kind of a hard access area. You about got to close down your upper sieve all the way and crawl in there on a piece of a heavy piece of cardboard or put a piece of plywood in there so you don't mash your sieves. Uh, that's another kind of thing of concern is you always want to open your sieves all the way up and look down in your sieves, look for bent fingers, large areas where maybe you have sieve material just gone. Uh, if you've had an object or something go through the machine, a lot of times you can have a hole in your lower sieve and it looks fine on your upper sieve and you can get a lot of um, a lot of non-crop material in your grain tank if your lower sieve has a hole in it that you're completely unaware of. Um, these two variators up here, that's your rotor drive. Um, same on this machine, that's the same as your separator. Um, you just got the two little plastic bushings. Um, like Dale said, if you see anywhere, replace them. There's bearings behind that. You know, everything has either the central lube or that, but you want to look up and if you see the outer bearing on this side, um, it's got like a lock ring to it. Just look up there and make sure it, you can see that the nut's still on the lock ring, that it's tight. Uh, if you had a bunch of vibration in that, it could loosen that up. Um, the other thing to check on these, I call them the dog bone supports. Um, they could crack right at where the end part goes where the bearing or you know it goes on the end of it if that's starting to crack replace them check for vibration somewhere else um, the whole idea of that is to support the outside of that shaft because those variator belts pull pretty hard on them so you lose one of them that's going to cause a lot of side load on your bearings that's a sealed bearing in that dog bone that nathan's talking about and the sealed bearing will just go out the not be anything wrong with the arm but the sealed bearings um, because of the kind of the force that's always on them with the variators always kind of wanting to pull towards each other. Uh, you'll see a lot of like red rust is kind of your indicator there around that, that bearing on the outside of that dog bone. Um, if you see that, it, it's a pretty simple thing. Just replace that bearing. Mm -hmm. That way you, um, uh, as your variator turns, you're not trying to turn a dry bearing. And I have seen that cause other problems that are more severe. Um, your chopper, you want to look up underneath. Um, one thing to check for is your loose veins. Um, make sure they're tight. The other thing, on the back of your veins where the material comes out, um, they'll get wore down enough that they'll kind of start having a hook down at the bottom or if you have a piece of debris go by and it'll tear the back side of it, replace them. Uh, they need to be a smooth edge, otherwise not so much in corn, but you get into bean stubble. Um, it'll actually start clumping because it'll build up at the bottom of that. It'll catch on it, and then you'll start seeing little clumps going out. Um, worst case is you get enough of it, it'll plug your chopper. Thoroughly, thoroughly inspect your spinning and your stationary knives on your chopper. Your stationary knives will affect how well you can uh, work through tough bean stubble and get it into a, a type of material that you want to leave on the field. The spinning knives will affect vibration issues to a great degree. One broken knife can create a vibration that will cause severe severe other issues for other belts on the machine. You always want to keep a close eye on your, on your rotating chopper knives and if you break one, by the book you have to replace eight. Um, if you're in a spot and as long as the wear is pretty even, you're way better off with one brand new knife than you are with one broken knife. Yeah. And like Dale said, your stationary knives, especially in beans, that will rob a lot more horsepower than people think. You know, we've had guys with horsepower complaints and 
think something's wrong with the engine, you go out there and it's his stationary knives are wore out and it's like two little pieces of wood sticking in there instead of a knife and it won't cut. So on your rotor gearboxes, most of my guys, I tell them change your gearbox oil every year. It's less than a gallon of fluid for both boxes. It's yes. A, it's a pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap preventative. Yep. And then on, so you check them, check for leakage at the seals. Um, there's a grease zerk on the front side of that gearbox that it's a pain in the butt to get to, but that is for the slide on the splines to the drive hub. I believe it's once, is it 500 hours? Grease those, that keeps everything lubed up so that your, your splines do not get stuck. Um, check your bolts for your couplers where it goes through to the drive shaft, also where it ties both of your rotor gearboxes together. Check, make sure you got all the bolts, none of them are loose, cracked, and that's, that's how I check your uh, rotor bearings as well. If you can get underneath, lay the backside down and pry on, the, pry on that rotor to try and pry it back, you should not have any play. If you can move that rotor back eighth of an inch or more, your front rotor bearings are starting. They're getting loose and you need to get them replaced.